Hiya guys, it's Spect here. Welcome back to my Total Warhammer 3. This is starting my 100 turn head start campaign with Katarin. Which one this one's going to be, because you guys voted for this one. And Queek. Queek's going to be a normal campaign, this is going to be a 100 turn head start one. Obviously, Kislev is its own province. It looks like they want you to take this one at the side, which is what I did last time. The problem is, last time I took this one, it for some reason brought me into a war with Drytra. Drytra shouldn't be at war with Kislev anyway. I mean, in the law, she very barely even left her bloody forest. And even then, if she did, she's got enemies to the south like Vlad. He's a greater threat to Drytra. Or, in the case of this map, also um, Festus over there. Not Kislev. Kislev aren't even in the Empire borders, and these territories here don't link onto a thing, so I don't know why that would be a thing. So what I am actually going to do is, I'm going to fuck this guy over, because I can. Because he's in a province that I could claim. But then I'm going to come back. Be proud, men of Kislev. Born to rule. They are one people. A gift from Kislev. Um, I did set up some stuff to go so like I'm destroying this because I don't want them. Um, the basic units you can recruit anyway from your city building. I need the growth. Um, I need this one so I can get my Patriarch, get him up and running. I also need my garrison building. But basically in this one, I'm probably going to do a little bit similar to my Bretonian campaign. I'm just going to be holding my starting province for the most part. Because um, I want a melee army. I'm going to use Zargard. And um, Warbear Riders are going to be the two units I'll be primarily aiming for. I'm not overly bothered about others. I know Catherine gets like cheaper Ice Guard. But I'll be honest, I don't want a ranged army. I mean, one of the big threats you're probably going to have is going to be Clan Mulder. And if Clan Mulder get ambushed with a ranged army, you are dead. You are very, very dead. You don't ever want to get ambushed by anyone. Um, when you've got a ranged army, but since Clan Morda being Skaven and Dreitra also technically having the same thing in case you come into war with her, they can ambush you by just attacking normally. And if you get ambushed, you are proper shafted with a ranged army. With a melee army, you don't care, but with a ranged army, you really, really do. So I'm actually going to leave these Norskans alive. If somebody else takes the territory, then that's fine. That was going to be the territory I'd go for, but then it might be something else. Like if someone takes Prague, I might go and take Prague instead. Obviously Prague again is his own sound. So if I do take Prague, then I'm limited to that. Um. We've got the money one here, haven't we? We'll get the garrison. Because the garrison's kind of naff, isn't it? Yeah. Let's beef up the garrison. Oh, Frost Maiden. Fuck. I know. Do that bloody thing now. The thing with the frost maidens is, which is why I'm researching this one here because I know this one gives you the ice witch, which is Lord. That one unlocks you another one of the frost maiden slots, and then that one's the other ice witch one. Um, I basically want ice witches leading my armies.
What a nice switch lead in my army and um, a uh, Patriarch as like support because he's got the replenished troops. They've only got two heroes again, so they're one of those factions that hasn't got enough heroes yet. I think every faction in this game needs like three or four heroes minimum, as in hero types. Um, and every faction should have access to one with replenishment and one with training. And the third one could be any of the others. You've got like scavenge mobility. They got destroyed really fast. And I'll turn three. And between the armies that I'd rather fight, I'd rather fight against Norsken armies than against Dreicher's armies. Because Dreicher builds armies that are really, really good against Kislev. Well, if you build ranged armies of Kislev. Because she's going to have tree kin, tree men, tree men ancients. All of these are really heavily armoured, got a lot of physical resistance and their missile resistance on top. Even the Dryads have also got physical resistance. The Dryads aren't great against some of the armoured frontline units. It's kind of weird. Um, gives you a, just two traits for a specific unit that you might not even use. It's like, alright. But they're my scouts anyway, so... I don't mind. But yeah, I'm quite happy to leave them there. Because then I'm not going to encounter Dreicher until she, like, takes Beckhaven or something. And then hopefully she just stays out my way and just deals with them. But as long as I can get this to tier 3, maybe tier 4, I can build the units I need. Then if she does decide to go to war with me, I can handle her. Atamans you're only going to get if you've got two provinces. Can give you benefits, but... It'll be wiser to stay like this, I think. I'm basically looking to just stay small, stay out of the way, and not get in the way of anyone big and nasty. Because basically I've got to stay this way for like 100 turns. Now I can maybe, with the um, the money building in Kislev, I can maybe afford a good portion of Zarina's main army. Can I afford two armies? Not a chance. Not, Not a chance. Looks after you. Mistress of ice. Not even bloody close. I'm going to get her ambush chance up, try and get her ambush skeeter. Right, so this costs 1,200. I might as well get one ready. So if I want to recruit one, there's one there. They are one, people. 
need to get this upgraded as well. I'm not keeping that building, that's just there because I need the growth. But I need it at the moment. I mean, I might build some... I mean, have these got on piercing? No, they don't. They've got it in melee. That's because they've got gleaves, though. No, they don't. So all the ones that got on piercing, then, are these guys. Hmm... So you'd kind of have to make them like a dwarf army. So you could take a couple little groms for your artillery if you're going to make a ranged army. You can take your ice guard. It doesn't really matter which one. Because they've got the same range to the same damage. They've got magical ammo so they can bypass physical resistance. But because they're not armor piercing, they're not going to do massively well against heavily armored units, which is the same flaw these things have got. But these are even worse because of weak versus armor. Now that's probably more for the melee than it is the ranged. But it might affect the range as well, I don't know. But like if then I'm seeing facing Chaos Warriors and Chosen, these aren't going to do very good. See, that's why Sisters of Avalon are really good, because they're armor piercing. If Sisters of Avalon went on a piercing, they wouldn't do very good. See, with dwarves, you, you can't take mass amounts of thunderers because it doesn't work. So you've got to take, like, maybe some thunderers or iron drakes, which can be put in gaps in between your infantry, your front line, and the rest of it's got to be quarrelers. Now, quarrelers, again, aren't on a piercing. But it's the only units that can fire up and over your troops. These are basically fulfill that same function. But it's how well they do or not. So I don't even think the ranged armors are function that amazing. Apart from the fact that they've all get 30 seconds of being unbreakable, which is the most busted shit in ever. Like, I don't know why they've got that. I always want Tempest because Tempest has got um, Hailstorm. Hailstorm's really good. Lord of Ice has got um, Ice Maiden's Kiss is not bad. You've got a really good buff spell with Frost Bleeds. And it's been magical as well, so that's pretty good. The Death Frost is actually really good. That's probably like second best direct damage spell after like Spirit Leech. For like damaging enemy lords and heroes and stuff. It's actually quite good, but it's expensive. Which is why Spirit Leech is better. Because it costs less and probably does the same amount of damage. There's this one, but I've not really tried it. Because when I pl last played Kislev, I didn't even get to turn 30. So I'm going to play Kislev the same way that I'd play Empire. When I play Empire, I cannot stand building an Empire ranged army. I do not like them. Because you've not really got any good frontline units like Iron Breakers that can hold the enemy back. You can have handgunners that are pretty good. But you only take so many of those and then you're looking to be taking crossbowmen. The difference is, dwarves do it better. So, when I'm playing Empire, I do the one thing dwarves can't. And I build a decent melee army. Dwarves can't really build a decent melee army because they have nothing fast that can chase down. Uh, cavalry. So. There is no greater ice. Oh, 
Let me see if I've one of them cat seeds. Yeah, I um, don't take um, the ranged armies, but Empire can surprisingly build very good melee armies because you can have great swords for your main troops. The armor piercing, anti infantry, same as the Zargard. Zargard basically just gives this version of great swords. But yeah, I take um, the ice witches do way more damage than like their the old world is melee soft. counterparts in this. Stop. And when they're on their, their bears as well, they're almost as good in combat in some cases. Plus, I remember last time um, I was playing Zarina, I got like a blue item. It was, um, I think it was an arcane item, but it might have been enchanted, I'm not sure. And basically it turned the person wielding it into a mortis engine. Please. So Katarina or somebody like that on the bear in combat would be badass. That'd be nasty as shit. Why have I got this one again? Why only Ice Guard? So these ones are only 600. Clan order. See this, I expect. That's got cruel to have that. The only thing that is really weird though with the um, only thing that is really strange with the um, it's a really weird trait. But yeah, you need to use one of your heroes anyway as scouts. You have to. So, since I need a Patriarch for a casualty replenishment, and he's also more of a melee type guy, he goes in the army. I can have a Witch lead the army, and then my Spellcasters um, can be basically be my scouts. They can scout out. It doesn't matter about this phone up, this is relevant because obviously he can't confederate me, so I ain't gotta do anything, I don't have to worry about that. And with a 100 turn AI head start campaign, if he was able to like just take me out by maxing that out, you wouldn't be able to do this type of campaign with Kislev. You'd have to do it as a normal campaign only. Well, since Kislev appear to have very good units, at least from what I've been fighting against, 
Kids have seemed to have disgusting auto resolves when you get in some of their higher tier troops. So I hope you see how that correlates over to the player. Because obviously the AI may get embellished auto resolves because you know the AI in hard, hard difficulty. She's got really shit trees. It'd be okay, but you've got to pay like 1,200 for them at a time. And they get three traits that are bad. Makes me wonder though, if there's traits in there that's specific to buffing Ice Guard, are the traits in there specific to buffing Zar Guard? If that's the case, then the Zargard will be uh, pretty badass if they can get buffed by the Jevil as well. Ostermark have been destroyed already. Jesus Christ. I'm at 300 fucking upkeep. Jesus. The old world is soft. Indulgent. <laughs> Expunge the chaos stain. Kislev, we greet you. Plus four leadership and fighting against Warriors of Chaos, Demons of Chaos, Chaos Dwarves and Nolska. That's actually very good. I mean, you get the unbreakable stuff, but that's if you, you like your leadership bottoms up, that's actually pretty good. Of the people. So, we've got these things down here, and uh, this is the one that I'd rather have, the plus 40 melee attack. 
but I do like the idea of him having perfect vigour. And this one's not bad either, where you can essentially heal your units. Could come in handy. Sooner we're getting, we can start leveling. So, This we stand against chaos. Wind may your ancestors watch over you. Yes, be at peace, for that is all I ever want. Okay. You also want to extort your All right. allies. Greetings on behalf of the Empire. Now what brings you here? Right. Yes. Greetings on behalf of the Empire. Now what brings you here with a sheathed blade? Of course. Look at that. I just got five settlements. God righteous here. Mm, just stay the fuck away from me, Dreicher. My power is absolute. No. Why is he giving me peace? I'm not the one attacking him. Well, actually, she's at war with Costaltin. Oh, she might bother Costaltin instead. That's fine. Just leave me the fuck alone. Go bother him.
Why do I keep getting this for Ice Guard? Is there no other option? Can the hell I keep getting all these shit trait ones? There is no great it's not just Ice Guard in the bloody army. There are other units. I'd rather just give me like flat plus five melee attack for all units. Then it benefits everything rather than just Ice Guard. I don't want Ice Guard. Devotion generated 10 from successful Frostbane hero actions. I didn't know that. Frost Maiden. Frozen Glory. I put one in there. Service to she got anything else up here? What's this? She can summon the snow leopard. Oh, these ones are actually good. Camping line of sight plus 10, ambush defense chance plus 30%. We well, don't need that, We're not going to be in an army, but still. Camping line of sight is pretty good. Because my step lock province. <laughs> Steel technology and research rate increased. <laughs> we don't need that. And we don't need that. So we can get faster research rate and more chance from steel technology. Which you want to put a point into anyway. Construction cost minus ten percent for all buildings local province. Camping line of sight is really good as a scout. That's kind of like percep perception or perceptive, whatever you call it. I am Kislev's daughter. The old world is soft and dark. Right, that one's better. Melee attack plus 5% Lord's Army. So why give me this one? For these? Why don't you just give me that one to begin with? So much better. I hate it when traits are like very, very specific. Unless it's a really good unit. In some, when technically they can be a good unit, I suppose, but it's like, just, no. This is not a challenge campaign though, like it was returned, where I'm, I was only going to build melee armies. I might build some ranged armies in the campaign. I don't know, I might just do it to try it out. But I'm not a fan of ranged armies, and especially not when they've not got an armor piercing missile option. Like Sisters of Avalon are very good. For Dark Elves, you've got Shades. Even Dark Shards actually are armor piercing. But you need to have an armor piercing option to deal with late game units. So a lot of late game units either have a lot of armor, a lot of physical resistance, or both. Ah, oh, bollocks, Cricket Dragon destroyed. The hands of the people. Frost Maiden. Frost's Grand Lord. Well, you will die cold and forgotten. My 
My rule is absolute. Well, there's box crack actually going with him. So actually, as well with that um, thing, that's encouraging you to have Frost Maidens as a, um, a hero outside your army. And the fact you get hero crew and plus three as well, because I'm pretty sure you get plus four from the building. So you're able to get like, Frost Maidens at like, rank seven or something. I'm not paying for any more yet. This is built. I need to get the money building and the Zar building. I need to start getting some Zar guard as well. Then at tier four, I can build up to that and get the war bears. I will need this building, unfortunately. I mean, it gives you plus four recruit rank, so you can get units at higher rank, and it will train them while they remain in the province as well. But it's for the hero capacity for Frost Maidens. It's basically their building. So I need to have that one. I just hope she doesn't start being a bitch and declare war on me. I don't need any of her shit. She's at war with Costaltin up there and whatnot. She's got enough enemies. Go and deal with those people. Leave me the fuck alone. Oh, bollocks. Fuck are these things? So that explains what this chaos incursion thing is when this thing here. So you've got to get above 100 for you to be completely shielded. Who's Dreiter at war with? She's at war with as I go, she should be at war with. And then the Great Orthodoxy, who she shouldn't be at war with, but she is. What? Be at peace. By the comet, greetings from Sigma. Um. Celeste, I speak with the wisdom of dragons behind me. Of the mother. 
one land. March with pride and verve. Defy chaos. Might go with the healer one and sync it up. Yeah. They are one people. Tutored by ice. Jesus endures. History's greatest. <laughs> As I got hunting money off me. I don't think so, mate. He's got a pissing gold mine up there. What the fuck does he want money off me for? And it's okay, Azag, you can come and try and attack me if you want to, but you've got to go through Dreyche first, and she's got about three armies running around. So, good luck with that. I don't really mind about any of these units near dying, apart from the hero. The hero is the only one I need to keep alive. The rest, I'm getting rid of all of them. That's built next turn, so... moment not going bad <laughs> not at war with Dreicher and Throt is not hammering me for once because last time I played with Katarin I had Throt come at me on about turn 12 with like three armies obviously two of them were full of like Skeevan slaves but his main army wasn't bad he had like some rat ogres in there, a rat ogre mutant, clan rats, obviously quite a lot of clan rats. Plus if he takes Prague, it's not bad for me, because then I could potentially take Prague and have that as my second province, rather than the other one, rather than the towns below me. Because that would be much easier to defend in a better garrison, because the garrisons on these like town versions are crap. Winter. Critical failure. Not only she fails on 56% chance, but she also wounds herself. Absolute fucking imbecile. And I'm paying her upkeep, and it's how much? I want a fucking refund. Oh, 
That bitch is useless. I didn't realise we'd have got that, otherwise I'd have just saved it this turn. So we got to turn 20, uh, turn 20 we got to tier 3. So I just need to get now to tier 4. But then I will need the money. Obviously the bear cavalry are 400 upkeep each. So that's the same price as like Grail Knights and Grail Guardians. And quite frankly, they're not as strong as Grail Knights or Grail Guardians. Grail Guardians, obviously the anti-infantry version. Oh no, not a plague rat. Don't do it. Not a fucking plague rat. Because it lasts forever. And it never goes away. What the hell is that thing? That's a hero? Oh, that's a special guy, in it? It's like a legendary hero fucker. He's unbreakable, that guy, as well as a rape painted ass. It's like a tree man ancient, but he's a hero. They got destroyed. Right, so he has taken that. Right, can you? No. Isn't there a thing? He's got it down there though, it took ages to get. I'm researching that anyway. Ice Queen of Kiefer. Oh, he didn't establish a, um, a plague. It was the Warlock Engineer guy. So he's built an undercity underneath Kislev. Which could also be bad. Because, I don't know, I haven't played enough against Skaven where they've got rolling with that many undercities. Does anyone know... Can Skeven use the um, Undercity where they, they blow your shit up? Replenish. Income from all buildings, okay. They get some rate goddamn buffs against chaos. Fucking hell. Four leadership, four melee attack, four melee defense. Warriors of Chaos, Demons of Chaos, Chaos Dwarves and Norska. The only ones getting around that are the beastmen. So 
It's 15 growth over here, that's kind of weird. It's kind of far down for the growth. They get immune to attrition? So fear and terror then, if they've got that research against Kislev, is basically useless. Because they're not affected by it. And they can get unbreakable for 30 seconds. What the fuck? Maybe attack plus 10 and magical attacks, not bad. Not bad at all. I'm not bothered about getting this one just yet because I'm not recruiting another lord anytime soon. I want to get one army. I'm even thinking about a second. The old world is scoffed. Indulge me. Weird thing is, he's got bad relations. But didn't he just pass that thing on here? Did my relations plus 10 with Kislev? Or does he not get that? Because in theory, he should be getting 10 better relations with me. We got the Ambuscader, that's what I wanted. So at least when later on, if I do want to try and ambush somebody, I can get a better use of bugger. When did Dreitch become such a powerhouse? Dreitch is normally a pussy. And this is speaking from a guy who's played a lot of Azag. And normally puts Dreitch down somewhere in the mid-game. So I've usually got to deal with Karak Kadrin first. And then sometimes I've even got to push down and deal with the Dwarves and put Scars next there and I was like a buffer. It used to be a gen general AI faction and they were crap. Yes, we can recruit some better units. I mean, you can actually, essentially, I suppose, you could use your um, Ursons, well, your, like your province effect things, you could use those. Your, um, your devotion down if you wanted to try and farm chaos incursions
pledge your obedience to me. None shall question me. Give me my better units. Still got one more upgrade to go for as well. Yes. My buildings I do want. I want this one. Is really good. Income from our buildings, the local province as well, which is really good because it benefits that. It's even more money. Um, I was thinking that one because of the, the plant relations, but I think they'll go up because of the research we've got as well. Um, that one I want because it's upkeep reduced for war bears, which I'm having a bit of, and it's 20 growth faction wide, which is really nice. This one is income from farms. Farms you don't get until you get towns, but still, the fact that it's faction wide is pretty nice. That would be good for a ticket ice card, but I'm not. Oops. Um. We need that and that, obviously. So between those two, though, there's recruit rank there a five, because that says four, and that says one, and that oh, that's one for war bear rider units only, but that's four for all. So I can get them at like rank five. Well, in fact, no, there's another two ranks there. I get rank seven. You can't crew rank seven. Fucking hell. Right, okay, so they're both quite good. I uh, want this one, obviously, for... Well, one, it gives you control, but also for the garrison being larger. That does give you the better top projectiles, though they've separated them for some stupid reason. I don't know why. And then we want to keep this and keep this. And I think that should be all our buildings on there that we need. Oh, and they just got buffed. Ice Queen, Maiden of the Frost. Let there be coil. Put it at rank two. Ooh. The Tsarina. Defy chaos. They are one. With this, I guard Kislev. You 
use this wisely, my people. We are both servants. You and I. One land. Income from markets faction wide. What's a markets buff other markets? Because these are markets, right? Okay. We'll see if that goes up to eight percent in two turns. Winter skull, which to be? A waste of my skill. You will die cold. Blizzards embrace. Did she actually do anything? I don't know. Mm, don't matter where he gets to. shall question me. of Kisa.
I have no patience for weakness. Kneel before your queen. Get rid of all the undesirable units that I'm not really bothered about. Chaos dwarves are up here? Fucking hell. They didn't dick around wasting any time getting up here, did they? So Chaos dwarves have to deal with the armor. Well, good job I've got armored cossars then. Although saying that though, now I could potentially use some armored cossars with shields. Cause Chaos dwarves to actually have good range units. It's funny how Skaven win a fight when they turn one a Chaos Dwarf army, but whenever they turn one a regular Dwarf army, they lose. Now just summoned that bloody plague rat thing. I do it for keep. I control the frosts. Cries wisdom from them. I train well. Maiden of the frosts. She's got assassinated. So no one's got block army. Oh, that's the other one I was thinking of. No was, um, earlier on, I, I was thinking you need at least three strong. heroes. Because you need one with... Um, You need one with training, one with punishment, but then you also need two heroes, one with assassinate, one with block army. In like every fa every faction, every faction should have that. Because these have got no block army. It does say in local region, but obviously it's going to be if there's a battle, so I'd rather him have it than her. She can have it if there's another one, just in case she happens to be in the region. But she's scouting ahead the bulk of the time. So I could get some of these regular ones just in case. Because Skeven have got range units. As have Chaos Dwarves. The only downside to these is they're not on piercing. So if, say, they go into battle and they're against Chaos Warriors with weapons or Chosen weapons, they're going to cut through them like fucking piss through ice. They're not going to stand a chance. They, they need to be the um, armor-piercing version to fight them on an equal, even, even field, I suppose. I haven't checked out the rich conditions on Tatooine yet. I don't think I ever have done. And I imagine whatever rich conditions I imagine in the Costaltines are very similar. So long as 
you do not question me. I'm gonna pick this guy so now he's going to tier 3 in 3 turns. Fucking hell. It's presently 14 strong. child they get hailstorm with a goddamn start See, the thing is with these ones that really bother me is it says vortex, but then says large explosion area. So is it a vortex or is it an explosion? Because they're two different types of spells. Say so the same there as well. That one says does not affect, affect friendly troops. The only time I've seen that is with the Lord Croak. Because none of his spells will hurt your own guys. See, Lord Croak with Croak with a Gorok, he's a really good start of action. Because Lord Croak will carry you so fucking hard. Because you can't, you can't really miscast with that guy. Not without somebody like giving him a debuff of some kind. And um, obviously because his spells can't hurt your own units, you can't like place it wrong and kill your own troops. So Croak, croak is deadly. He's a, he's a killing machine, Croak is. Because he got put in there. Packmaster and an assassin. The warp fire throwers. Because this would be chump.
Right. This is purely for distraction because these can run and help us afterwards. She can have three of them, being that she's the lord. And she can have one of those guys. He can take the other four. Because both of these ways to attack are both good. And if they want to cover both ways, that's fine. It splits up their army. Because their army is not massive. And most of it's clan rats and stuff. And they won't compete with these units. They haven't got many decent missile units. The only real decent missile unit they've got is them warp fire throwers that were jumped in there turn before by that pain in the ass lord. to there I don't want him to get shot trying to come through by these fucking towers At least the towers at this point aren't that fully upgraded. Fully upgraded fucking towers would be bloody nasty. The war ward is over here though. Okay. Walk five throws are down there. I forgot like no, no magic. That one's magic. I was really like really stupid alone. Right, okay, they've moved away. Bring these in here as well.
Oh god. Oh. We threw yet on Zarina's side? No, we are not. Why is this cat dying? Move, cat. Why have they got so many goddamn minutes from below us? Keep running. Come on. Prove you're not completely useless. What are you being chased by? Wolf rats. through that fucking gate yet. What the fuck is going on here? This gate isn't down yet. Who is attacking the gate? He's telling me someone's attacking the gate. Everyone in. Moving. 
I don't know. Just someone. Where the fucking... Where the idiot horseman? Useless. Come on. No. Push through them. Little tiny rats cannot stop a gigantic fucking snow leopard. They've not even got spears. My cavalry units in this so far, the winged lances and these are fucking useless. They'll just fight and die, can't they? Fucking crap. Oh, now he gets past. Now he does what I asked him to do all the fucking long. Useless fucking cat, I swear to God. If that creature was any less use uh, useful. The problem is they're building up these bleeding towers around me, this is the thing. 
hope this cat is doing what I want it to do. Oh, oh, oh. Who's firing at it? Oh god, oh there's no two firing at it. Oh never mind. Mm, okay. No, no, no. Bloody hell. Fuck's sake. Fucking dickhead towers. Had to build a fucking tower up there, didn't they? Was it bollocks? Admittedly, clan rats are kind of fighting hard against um, armoured cossars. Armoured cossars obviously aren't very good. Despite the fact they're armoured, clearly not very good. The Zara Guard are very good. Too many of these. Just gave me that one of this fight.
them off the field Zarina get your ass up there you go with her make haste the amount of fucking towers they've got that are firing at us what I needed. It doesn't matter that it's dirty and unclean. It doesn't matter if I've lost units. I just needed the city. I lost my patriarch though. Look at the fucking kills they were getting. See, this is what's normally happening to me with my nasty skulkers against slayers. Now these should be good against things like nasty skulkers. Slayers shouldn't. They're anti-large, they're not an anti-infantry unit. They're being really good against the wrong type of unit. Slayers need nerfing against regular infantry sized units. Even the giant slayers, I don't care that they're armor piercing. They can't be good against everything. It doesn't work that way. shall question me march onward they are one I'm surprised none of these died. <laughs> With this, I guard Kislev. Mistress of Ice. Against council order. We are both servants. You and I. Mistress of Ice. Their power. 
Yeah, that one's worth getting for the hero logical rank. See, the thing's not by the leadership thing. Even though we've got good leadership, I suppose. P probably just take that one and not worry about the other two. Because we want that, that's good. Gives you money a resource, I think, on construction cost man 6% for province settlement buildings faction wide. Which is really good. Obviously, want these three again. So that's five. Six, seven. We could potentially build that. And I could maybe keep one of these two because they've got a faction wide buff as well. So even when you've got your maximum growth, they're not completely useless because you can help other provinces with them. See, I like buildings like that that continue to be useful after technically they should be. died Patriarch of Kislev. so our recovery is garbage he's got mainly scaven slaves so I'm not overly my concerned by him my but my garrison is pretty much dead and it's also garbage of the frosts frosts fury upon them winter provides <laughs> think me fool fool mistress of ice pledge your obedience to me Because with two of these, I should be able to get a full army. I've probably got enough here to carry this anyway. Even these guys, as they are. No, blame you, you. Foolish thing. No. As long as it's just him attacking, we should be alright. Just in case, I'll give it a wee save. And then, if need be, we can always cancel recruitment and get the fuck out of Dodge. We'll see, but we should be alright. Right, well I hope you guys have enjoyed the start to Catherine. This one's been quite long, but I was trying to just get through it in the simplest way possible. Um, but if you've enjoyed, leave a like. If you're new around here, please drop a sub, help grow the channel. And I'll catch you in the next video. Take care everyone, and have a great day.